They they mate. We are live. It's, yeah. ha- it's honeymoon season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see. Okay. Here we go, guys, I'm gonna start from fresh. Find a hook with you. There's two styles of hook here. I prefer the straight shank than the curved shank. Just because you want everything to sit flat. This is a size 6. It's once, I think one size too big. I said I'd fish a size 8 instead. Um, okay, so obviously we start off with. Uh, if I'm going too fast from time, please slow me down. These days I don't tie for fun. Tie because we have to tie. Okay, so now the trick is you don't tie to the end of the bend. You give it maybe like a centimeter or so off. Same with the head, I'll show you. Okay, so then you've got two colors of foam. You've got your dark and light. You can use any two colors. My favorite color is like a lighter tan and a darker brown. But it makes absolutely no difference. Uh, just make sure that you cut them similar lengths. Okay. I like to put the lighter color underneath and the darker color on top. I don't think it makes a big difference. I'm going to shape them for you now. The bottom one, can you guys see in there in the camera? Yeah. yeah. I cut flush, and then I just cut off the ends like that. This makes no, this is how it's tied, but I don't think it makes. It's just like the silhouette makes it look like a hopper. So those are, for my cutting hands, impossible to get them straight. So long as it goes there, and then to even it out, you can cut in the middle. So it's got, uh, I'm not going to even say what kind of shape that is, but... <laughs> It's, it's kosher. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I've got my other piece of foam. Choose the thickness. I like the thinner thickness. Then this one, the, the darker foam. I'm going to cut a V out of. So I'm going to cut a small V. Not deep. Okay, that's a terrible V. I'm going to redo that V. Never pull it out, and always make the same mistake. Okay, that will do. Show you guys will cut it, cut it a closer V. So when you tie your fly, you're gonna put the lighter one on bottom and the heavy one on top, and it's gonna look like that. Easy. Okay. So now you just make sure that you tie it in where your thread is, by a centimeter back, and the end of the foam just goes over the end of the hook. I've been fishing this fly on the vol lately and I've had a couple fish eat it. Okay, the, more, I've caught more than like a couple fish in it, but they, they'll come up and they won't fit in its mouth. And they'll like take it down and chew in it three or four times until it gets in its mouth. You watch them in the clear water, and then when they take it, you hit, hit them. And it's, it's pretty amazing. You realize, why well, do we put so much hard work into this fly fishing? These fish are so stupid. Okay. You should always apply super glue. If you have super glue, just put I'll put a drop of super glue under the thread now to make it hold. And you put um, the rubber on top. Okay. Directly on top. So don't worry about the neatness for now. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. That's a good excuse. But that's kind of what you're looking for there. Okay. Then on the same line of where you tie that in, you take yourself some rubber legs. These aren't the ideal perfect legs. I like the round rubber, that kind of rubber, because it's just straight. And, if the, and, the, and the thicker the legs and stronger the legs, it helps with flotation as well. We will use these for now. It might look like a bit of a spares hopper thing, but it will work. So you just tie in, just tie in one, one lid there, one leg that side, place it that side. It's going to be very spares. Double 
there. And then you hold two back, and make sure you get a few wraps in there. And then these two forwards, it's fine there. What some guys do is they put a bit of uh, tub in between just to separate them. But I'm not going to go through that effort tonight. Okay, now you pull everything back. What's a clear idea that I will do now, because I will show you. Some guys take some copper wire. Just a, take some copper wire. Take everything back. And you could actually like keep it down like that. Just to keep everything out the way and you know, so you can work. Otherwise everything gets in the way there. Okay, now I'm gonna take some brown chenille, a uh, brown hackle. I strip the ends there, it just makes it a little bit neater. And I'm not a very neat tire, so when I say it makes it neater, it's, it means you have to do it. Tying it by the stem or the By the stem. Just less less mess. So I'll tie it by the stem. Over there. <coughs> and then I take some of this ice stub and chenille. I've actually never seen this stuff and I really like it for this fly. I will be stealing some here for myself. If you guys don't use. Okay. So I tie it in like that. Easy. Okay, then I take the top or bottom, the lighter foam. I'm going to tie that in flush. So now the trick is you need to know when you want to stop it. So the more space you leave for the head, the better. So don't be shy. Always go back of a length of what you want, what you want to use. So I tie it in over there. So it gives me a big space to um, to make a big fat head. So I'm going to tie this down all the way down until the, the R to make a little lip there. There. And now that doesn't look very even, so now we take the thread and we tie the whole thing down. And that's why it's also, it's got a layer of compressed foam underneath the whole fly. You're still going to put another layer of foam on top. So this thing really does float. And when you put the hydro stop, the foam really does soak up the hydro stop. And then you can compress as much as you want. If you want a thicker fly, thinner fly, it's completely up to you. Okay, everyone happy so far? Okay, now I'm going to take the chenille. Legs forwards. Now it's very important that you put the chenille in front of those two legs because it just makes it stand where, where you want it to stand. So now I can see it come a bit forward. So now I wind back and now I can compress the chenille closer. And put two wraps just behind. So now it sits more of a better angle, but we'll fix that later. I'm making quite a fat one here for you guys. Okay. I say I want to stop it over there. I want to make space for a head. I left myself enough space. Yep. Kind of looks like a woolly bugger now, but form your fly. Okay, now everyone happy up to there. Now I'm gonna take my hackle, and it's very important here, and you use the hackle as well, it will help those legs stay where you want them to. Because now it'll stop it there. Don't be shy with the hackle. Use your money, use your hackle and just wrap it. Because this also helps it float really well. It does compress the chenille a little bit. So always make leave rather too much space for the head than too little. I think this is the first time I've left enough space for the head ever. So should be good. Okay, now then before you you cut down, you put down the foam, you pull everything back and you trim flush 
or the hackle. The reason for it is not necessary. If there's too much hackle like that, it just spins. And you just want a little bit of stubble to break that surface tension. I tried it to keep it the one time, I actually forgot to trim it, and I had like three casts and my whole rig was just like spinning. And you want this this fly to land flush. You don't want to stay on the water, it must sit in the water. The hackle must sit on the water, fly must sit on top. So everyone happy like that so far? Okay. Now I'm gonna bring back the top foam. I'm gonna pull it a little bit tied off where I want my head to be. Make sure you have enough space. Then you take the foam and you tie it down with the rest of the foam. So you've got them both together at the R. Happy. Shop. Okay. Now I'm going to tie in the. I don't see the point of this, but everyone seems to be very fanatical about the flash part. These Americans like to put flash into everything they tie. But I'll tie it. It works apparently. Taking quite a lot of um, crystal chenille. The guys normally tie it with like multicolored. But I honestly don't think it makes a massive difference. The way I do it is a bit differently. I tie it in the middle, bring it back into one clump going forward. So I tie it just behind where you normally tie your wing. Okay, that's fine actually. Sometimes I tie it forwards and then back out so it spreads out. But as long as it doesn't sit flush on the bottom, it's 100%. Rather let it sit too up than too down because the rest of the materials will bring it down. And the wing must just be in line with the with a, with a V. Like that. Sort of guys. Happy. Okay. Next part is my, I'm going to leave the legs for last. That's where things go pear shaped. We're going to use, I'm going to use my elk here. You can use the brown one. I like the lighter wing. This is the most high visible stuff on a dry fly. You use any multicolor of antron post you want in a clink hammer. You don't see anything like you do Alke. White Alke. It's the most visible thing. Herman will vouch for it as well. Stimulators, anything white. Stands out. So I want to take a... Rather over dirt than under dirt. Hair stacker. I like to just take out and brush out the ends, hold in the front all the short straws. Climp it. Okay, the arms all straight, but you don't have to worry about it. And then what I do, I measure it. Same, just a little bit longer than the flash. I trim it just to make life a bit easier. You tie it in just behind the flash. One soft pull, then a hard pull. A lot of guys say you can't tie these kind of flies with um, nano silk. I don't know what they're talking about. Because I only use nano silk for everything. You cut a little bit, but not much. Nano silk is the answer to everything in life. Okay, then I clump it down. You, the harder you pull it, obviously, the more it spreads out. And you want it to spread out because then um, it won't uh, absorb the water as much when it does get wet and it'll dry quicker. Okay. Now we put our legs on. So some more legs. So legs in the middle.
See, these legs, it gets a bit tricky because they... Oh, so you tie the legs in by the, by the thumb? Yeah, the so in the middle, I, I'll show you now why I like to do it. I remember now, I didn't tie my sample fly like that, but... I like to put them in the middle of the head. The reasons for that is now when I use dubbing for the head, I could use the dubbing to put those legs perfect. And I'm very fanatical about the legs lying where I want them to because it does affect how they how it goes through the air and how it floats. Normally you use a darker colour, but this is perfect. My favourite colour for hoppers is hazier. So this is how normally tie the body and then a dark one off the head. And don't be scared. All of this is gonna absorb hydro stop. So the more fluff you put in it, the better. Okay, let me just neaten up this patch here. Let me just a manic. Because I can't see what's going on here now. Okay. So I'll do one wrap behind the legs. One wrap between the legs. This leg doesn't want to move. I want them a bit further apart, so I could actually do two wraps between, one more, between, dubbing, and then I'll do one wrap again behind the legs. Can get there. It looks a bit messy, but it's fine. It's not. This is not a size 20 CDC fly. The fish aren't going to be judging these things like that. Okay. Then now you have two pieces of foam there. You pull the top piece over to where your thread ended. I'll pull my back legs backwards. You turn everything up, keep your front foot forwards. And I'll find where I want to place it. And just go slowly because you can pick it. You want it to squash down the alke, but not too much so it sits flush. It must put it in form. So that for me would be perfect. Just play around with it, take your time, there's no rush. I'll touch on myself. And I'll bring the thread again to the head. A lot of guys tie it off over there. But I find it very difficult to get over all the material. So I'd rather take bring the nanosilk to the front. Obviously if I was tying it on a proper thing and I had time, I would use super glue at every step the phone comes in. Okay, so there, then the front foam you're going to cut into a lip, so you cut it like that, and then sometimes I cut the edges a little bit, I don't know why the guys do it like this, but this is how we're told to tie it, so like that, and then this part now you want to cut a V, so I find it much easier to cut straight, and then you cut it into a V. Like that, pull it up, get everything in a shape. Then there's a I find it very difficult to cut these all straight, so I just bunch them together. Give it slack, not tension. Touch it there. Same thing here. When I tied this in comp the other day, because they judge us on our fly tying, they said to me my legs on straight. I said oh, I'm <laughs> I said, but my hoppers are never straight. <laughs> Yeah. So that's unless, except for the one leg folding over, you can heat it up a little bit if you want. Um, who do you think, Driss? Who's the most critical fly tie you've ever met? MC, MC. MC was in fiction. You should tell MC that you you don't have an hour to tie your fly. Yeah.
Okay guys, so I'm pretty happy with that. So it's just got the profile, it's got, you could see it from a mile away, soak in a hydro stop. Um, yeah, I'll eat it. <laughs> but I kosher. So yeah, that's the Amy's end, guys. Fish it and enjoy. <laughs> Materials are here. I'm keeping this one. Then how long will the normally take you? Um.